ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू टुडे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्री चैतन्य चरितमृत आदि लीला चैप्टर फाइव मुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंघयते गिरिम यत कृपा तम हम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तालिम परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्यश्वर हरि ओम तत्सम वर्सेज हंड्रेड एंड हंड्रेड एंड वन He lay there with Ananta as his bed. Lord Ananta is a divine serpent having thousands of heads, thousands of faces, thousands of eyes, and thousands of hands and feet. He is the seed of all incarnations and is the cause of the material world. Purport: In the reservoir of water, first created by the perspiration of Garbo Dakshay Vishnu, the Lord lies on the Shesha plenary expansion of. Vishnu, who is described in Shri Mad Bhagavatam and in the Four Vedas, as follows: Sahasra Shirsha Purusha Sahasra Aksha Sahasra Path Sabhumin Vishvato Vritva Tyatishthat Dashang Gulam. The Vishnu form called Ananta Shine has thousands of hands and legs and thousands of eyes, and he is the active generator of all the incarnations within the material world. Verse hundred and two. From his navel grew a lotus flower, which became the birthplace of Lord Brahma. Verse one hundred and three. Within the stem of that lotus were the fourteen worlds. Thus, the supreme Lord, as Brahma, created the entire creation. Verse hundred and four. And as Lord Vishnu, he maintains the entire world. Lord Vishnu, being beyond all material attributes. Has no touch with the material qualities. Purport: Shri Baldev Vidya Bhushan says that although Vishnu is the predominating deity of the quality of goodness in the material world, he is never affected by the quality of goodness, for he directs that quality simply by his supreme will. It is said that all living entities can derive all good fortune from the Lord simply by his will. In the Vaman Puran, it is said that the same Vishnu expands himself as Brahma and Shiva to direct the different qualities. Because Lord Vishnu expands the quality of goodness, he has the name Satvatanu. The multifarious incarnations of Shiro Dakshay Vishnu are known as Satvatanu. Therefore, in all Vedic scriptures, Vishnu has been described as being free from all material qualities. In the tenth canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam, it is said, "Hari hi nirguna sakshat purusha prakrite paraha sa sarva drig upadrishta tam bhajan nirguno bhavet." The supreme personality of Godhead Hari is always uncontaminated by the modes of material nature. For he is beyond the material manifestation. He is the source of the knowledge of all the demigods, headed by Lord Brahma, and he is the witness of everything. Therefore, one who worships the supreme Lord Vishnu also attains freedom from the contamination of material nature. Bhagavatam ten point eight eight point five. One can attain freedom from the contamination of material nature by worshiping Vishnu, and therefore he is called. Satvatanu, as described above, verse one hundred and five. Assuming the form of Rudra, he destroys the creation. Thus, creation, maintenance, and dissolution are created by his will. Purport: Maheshwar or Lord Shiva is not an ordinary living being, nor is he equal to Lord Vishnu. Effectively comparing Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva, the Brahma Samhita says that Vishnu is like milk, whereas Shiva is like yogurt. Yogurt is nothing like milk, but nevertheless, it is milk also. Verse hundred and six. He is the super soul, Hiranya Garbha, the cause of the material world. The super, the universal form is conceived as his expansion. Verse hundred and seven. That Lord Narayan is a part of the plenary part of Lord Nityananda Balram. Who is the source of all incarnations? Verse hundred and eight. I have thus explained the tenth verse, 
Now please listen to the meaning of the 11th verse with all your mind. Verse 109, I offered my respectful obeisances unto the feet of Sri Nityananda Ram, whose secondary part is the Vishnu lying in the ocean of milk, that Kshiro Dakshai Vishnu is the super soul of all living entities and the maintainer of all the universes. Sheshanag is his further subpart. Verse 110. The material planets rest within the stem that grows from the lotus navel of Lord Narayan. Among these planets are seven oceans. Verse 111, there is, therein part of the ocean of milk lies Shvetadweep, the abode of sustainer Lord Vishnu. Perfect in the Siddhanta Shiromani. And astrological texts, the different oceans are described as follows. First, the ocean of salt water. Second, the ocean of milk. Third, the ocean of yogurt. Fourth, ocean of clarified butter. Fifth, ocean of sugar cane juice. Sixth, ocean of liquor. And seventh, the ocean of sweet water. On the southern side of the ocean of salt water is the ocean of milk. Where Lord Kshiro Dakshai Vishnu resides, he is worshipped there by demigods as Brahma. Sorry, he is worshipped there by demigods like Brahma. Verse 112, he is the super soul of all living entities. He maintains this material world and he is its lord. The Laku Bhagavatamrita Purva 2.36-42 gives the following descriptions of the Vishnu Lok within the universe quoted from the Vishnu Dharma, Dharmottara. Above Rudra Lok, the planet of the Lord Shiva is the planet called Vishnu Lok. 400,000 miles in the circumference, which is inaccessible to any mortal living being. Above that Vishnu Lok and east of the Sumeru Hill is a golden island called Mahavishnu Lok in the ocean of salt water. Lord Brahma and other demigods sometimes go there to meet Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu lies there with the goddess of fortune. And it is said that during the four months of the rainy season, he enjoys sleeping on the Sheshanag bed. East of Sumeru is the ocean of milk in which there is a white city on white island where the Lord can be seen sitting with his consort Lakshmiji on the throne of Shesha. The feature of Vishnu also enjoys sleeping during the four months of the that feature of Vishnu also enjoys sleeping during the four months of the rainy season. The Shvetadweep in the milk ocean is situated just south of the ocean of salt water. It is calculated that the area of Shvetadweep is 200,000 square miles. This transcendentally beautiful island is decorated with desired trees to please Lord Vishnu and his consort. There are references to the Shvetadweep in the Brahmanda Puran, Vishnu Puran, Mahabharat, and Padma Puran. And there is the following reference in the Srimad Bhagavatam. 11.15.18 Shweta Dvipa Patao Chittam Shuddhe Dharma Maye Mai Dharyan Shwetattam Yati Shad Urmi Nahito Naraha Mighty Uddhav. You may also know that my transcendental form of Vishnu in Shweta Dvip is identical with me in divinity. Anyone who places the Lord of Shwetri within, within his heart can surpass the pangs of the six material tribulations, hunger, thirst, birth, death, lamentation and illusion. Thus one can attain his original transcendental form. Verse 113, in the ages and millenniums of Manu, he appears as different incarnations to establish the principles of real religion and vanquish the principles of irreligion. Purport the Lord Vishnu who lies in the ocean of milk incarnates himself in various forms to maintain the laws of the cosmos and annihilate the causes of disturbance. Such incarnations are visible in every Manvantara that is in the course of the reign of each Manu who lives for 71 times 4,320,000 years. 14 such Manus take their birth and die to yield the place for the next during one day of Brahma.
Verse 114, unable to see him, the demigods go to the shore of the ocean of milk and offer prayers to him. Purport, the denizens of heaven who live in the planetary systems beginning from Swarlok cannot even see Lord Vishnu in Shwetadweep. Unable to reach the island, they can simply approach the beach of the milk ocean to offer transcendental prayers to the Lord, appealing to him on special occasions to appear as an incarnation. Verse 115, he then descends to maintain the material world. His unlimited opulences cannot be counted. Verse 116, that Lord Vishnu is but a part of a part of plenary portion of Lord Nityananda, who is the source of all incarnations. Purport, the Lord of Shwetadweep has immense potency for creation and destruction. Sri Nityananda Prabhu being Baldev himself, the original form of Sankarshan, is the original form of the Lord of Shwetadweep. Verse 117, that same Lord Vishnu in the form of Shesha holds the planets upon his heads, although he does not know where they are, for he cannot feel their existence upon his heads. Verse 118, his thousands of extended hoods are adorned with dazzling jewels surpassing the sun. Verse 119, the universe which measures 500 million yojans in diameter rests on one of his hoods like a mustard seed. Purper, the Lord of Shwetadweepa, expands himself as Sheshanag who sustains all the planets upon his innumerable hoods. These huge global spheres are compared to grains of mustard resting on the spiritual hoods of Sheshanag. The scientist's law of gravity is a partial explanation of Lord Sankarshan's energy. The name Sankarshan has an etymological relationship to the idea of gravity. There is a reference to Sheshanag in Srimad Bhagavatam 5.17.21 where it is said, Yam ahur asyastiti janma samyamam tribhir vibhinam yam anantam rishayaha. Naveda Siddhartham Eva Kvachit Stitam Bhu Mandalam Murtha Sahasra Dhamasu. O my Lord, the hymns of the Vedas proclaim that you are the effective cause for the creation, maintenance, and destruction, but in fact, you are transcendental to all limitations and are therefore known as unlimited. On your thousands of hoods rest the innumerable global spheres like grains of mustard, so insignificant that you have no perception of their weight. The Bhagavatam further states in 5.2.5.2 Yasyedam Kshiti Mandalam Bhagavato Ananta Murte Sahasra Shirsha Ekasmin Eva Shirshani Dhyamanam Siddhartha Eva Lakshate. Lord Anantadev has thousands of hoods. Each sustains a global sphere that appears like a grain of mustard. Verse 120, that Ananta Shesh is the devotee incarnation of Godhead. He knows nothing but service to Lord. Purport Srila Jiva Goswami in his Krishna Sandarbha has described Sheshanag as follows. Sri Ananta Dev has thousands of faces and is fully independent, always ready to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He waits upon him constantly. Sankarshan is the first expansion of Vasudev. And because he appears by his own will, he is called Swara. Fully independent. He is therefore infinite and transcendental to all limits of time and space. He himself appears as the thousand headed Shesha in the Skanda Puran in the Ayodhya Mahatma chapter. The demigod Indra requested Lord Shesha, who was standing before him as Lakshman, please go to your eternal abode, Vishnu Lok, where your expansion Shesha with his serpentine hoods is also present. After thus dispatching Lakshman to the regions of Patal, Lord Indra returned to his abode. This quotation indicates that the Sankarshan of the quadruple form descends with Lord Ram as Lakshman. When Lord Ram disappears, Shesha again separates himself from the personality of Lakshman. Shesha then returns to his own abode in the Patal regions and Lakshman returns to his abode in Vaikuntha. The Lagu Bhagavatam Bhagavatamrita gives the following description. The Sankarshan of the second group of quadruple form appear as Ram. 
Taking with him Shesha, who bears the global spheres, the two of these two are the features of Shesha. One is the bearer of the globes, and the other is the bedstead servitor. The Shesha who bears the globes is the potent incarnation of Sankarshan, and therefore he is sometimes also called Sankarshan. The bedstead feature of Shesha always presents himself as an eternal servitor of the Lord. So we'll continue our reading from here onwards next time. Thank you for joining. Hari Om Tat Sat, Hare Krishna.